Toronto evening to your brand new Queen's Key. I'm Mark Wilson. I'm the chair of the Waterfront Toronto Board of Directors and I'm the MC today. And let me start first of all by thanking all of you for coming today. I know that many of you have been waiting for this moment. It's finally here after two and a half years of construction. So thank you. Um, let me also remind you that Queen Street is fully operational. It is a street. Um, the Martin Goodman Trail is a bicycle trail, and amongst other things, not a pedestrian path. And there's a streetcar right away. So they're active and being used. So please, for your safety, stay off of them. So let's get started. Um, before I introduce the speakers, I just want to say a few words. Red granite, over two million pieces of red Canadian granite, have been laid on this waterfront. And you'll see the granite underneath where most of you are standing right now. It marks that new seven meter wide pedestrian promenade. It's one of the principal features of the new Queen's Key. And it symbolizes that the street, it's functional for cars, but it's also for people. And most of that granite actually sits where there used to be two lanes of quite dysfunctional traffic. The street works better today than it did before. This red granite is going to be seen all around the waterfront. It's a symbol of our new waterfront. What are you guys doing to me here? <laughs> it ties together the central waterfront where we are, are our East Bayfront projects. It takes all the way from Portland Slip in the far west by Bathurst Street, all along Queens Key, the wave decks we're standing on, Harbor Front, Sugar Beach, all the way east to the Water's Edge Promenade at Sherbert Common and beyond. This granite marks our waterfront, the entire central waterfront. And it pulls together a much bigger idea and a bigger goal. We want to make Toronto's waterfront one can we all be very, very proud of. And not just for its own sake, although that's very important. The waterfront project, it's a crucial part of Toronto continuing to be one of the most attractive and economically competitive places in the world. It's an advantage for Toronto as we complete globally for talent and capital. That's what our goal is at Waterfront Toronto, the new Queen's Key. I won't repeat you know, what Minister Glenn Murray said about something that's very special here, where you're able to have people, you know, coexist together as it should be in a balanced transportation system in a healthy city, where you have transit and cycling and pedestrians and cars and trucks all able to go about their business uh, on a very important street and it's to be done, it is done, in a way that is beautiful as well. And so I just want to acknowledge that this is a great example of the best of what government can do when they work together. You have all three levels of government who've worked together on this and you have the Waterfront Corporation that's helped bring it together and I want to say as somebody who comes from the city government that we've had a great team at City Hall and our most senior public servant John Livy is here, he's our acting city manager and they've worked hard uh, as well as the Waterfront Corporation staff and the federal public servants and the provincial public servants. This is how it should be every day on every project that we can combine together all these modes of transportation and make this a livable home for people who live and visit and work here and that we can make sure all the governments are seen to work together because to go along with what Glenn Murray said, we all work for you, no matter which level of government we're at, and we all subsist on the same monies that you send to government. And so I think it is important uh, to acknowledge that and to acknowledge that it is a complete street, that it is a great, um, that it is a great waterfront for everybody, and to acknowledge that it's going to be a beacon for further investment in jobs. As 17 million people visit the waterfront every year. That is the second most visited place in the city. Who knows what the first one is? 
Eaton Center. Nope, I hear people saying the CN Tower. It's not any other guesses. It's the Eaton Center, believe it or not. I wouldn't have guessed it. I have trouble processing that kind of information. But when it's as important as it is, and it's only going to grow in importance over time, um, it is something that is to be treasured. It's the only waterfront we have. Now, I've always believed that the Revitalized Queen's Key was the project that would allow the public to truly understand the potential of a revitalized waterfront. Now, it's easy to forget now what Queen's Key used to look like only a few years ago. A forbidding, dreary, and uninspiring street. Dysfunctional for pedestrians, cyclists, and cars. Now, Queensway was Queen's Key was designated on a spacing blog recently as one of the ten ugliest streets in North America. <laughs> a well-earned accolade, I tell you. It was, it was grim. Our vision for Queen's Key has been to turn it into a great street. A beautiful new face for Toronto and its revitalized waterfront. The new front door of the city and one befitting a dynamic, prosperous Toronto that is holding its own in the global marketplace. What we celebrate today is an inviting new public space that is not only beautiful, but also functional for people's bikes, transit, and cars. A new, beautiful gateway to the lake. The revitalized Queen Sea offers grand civic spaces, enjoyable new public realm for residents, businesses, and visitors alike. And I invite you to, th to think about the future and visualize the revitalized Queen Ski built out to the east all the way to Parliament Street. You know, a great new spine connected to our waterfront. Get the car. Bringing to life a vision like this, such as the transformation of Queen's Key, requires a lot of people. People with passion, vision, dedication, and skill. And I'm very proud of the numerous design awards won by the project. They represent confirmation of the efforts of a talented group of people who have brought Queen's Key up to global best standards. And I want to recognize the original design team, West 8 and Detroit Al Superior, particularly Adrian Goose, right here. Uh, also, also John Hillier, it's award-winning vision for Queen's Key. I'd also like to acknowledge the role that Roger Detroit had in helping us move the vision for Queen's Key forward. Uh, Roger's recent passing is a great loss to the architectural community, and we feel very grateful to have had the benefit of Roger's talents as part of the design of Queen's Key. This was the first global design competition we did at Waterfront Toronto. This was the first one. We've done a number since then, but this one was done, and this one is built, and this one is implemented, and that process is now something that we value um, and delivers value to all of Toronto. Well, now it's actually time to open the street. Uh, this giant ribbon, excuse me, 650 meters, it goes all the way down to HDO Park and all the way down to York Street, which means there's tons of room on it, so everyone here, feel free to grab a spot along the ribbon because we're going to have some fun with it before we cut it into shreds. So join along please. 650 meters of ribbon. That's uh, taller than the big old CN Tower that you're looking at right there by a whole hundred meters. Alright, we'll bring it back down to our waist. Now it's a team effort. Everybody on the ribbon up above your head in three, two, one. Let's shake it. Let's see that wave. Yeah. We're lucky for lots of volunteers coming up. We gotta go down to the second. Zone. It's the biggest ribbon Toronto has ever seen. Yeah, there it is. Woo! Send another one. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Couple more of those waves coming into the brand new Queen's Key. Got it. all across the brand new Queen's Key all weekend long, so please enjoy it. Thanks for coming down and making it so special.